Special greetings to our viewers. We thank you for joining us for yet another episode of our Great Controversy series. I'm your host, Dukiswa, and I'm sitting with my panelists here, my brother Nati, my sister Nsigi, sister Kumbu, and brother Francois. And over the past few weeks, we've been discussing a quite a number of topics that have been dealing with the law of God, some of the acts of Satan, as well as the dead not being dead. Mm. And today's topic is chapter 36, and it's called The Impending Conflict. Mm. So we're going to be discussing this topic. Please join us, and we hope that you'll be able to think about these issues because they are really important issues that are actually ushering us to the time when this world has to come to an end. We're going to begin with a word of prayer, and I'm going to ask my sister Kumbu to pray for us. Okay, shall we pray? Our kind and our loving Father, we want to thank you, Lord, in a special way for this opportunity that you've given us, Lord, to dig deeper into your word, Lord. Mm. As we are going to study right now, we pray for the Holy Spirit in a special way. You promised us, Lord, that when he comes, he shall lead us unto all truth. Oh, yes. So, Lord, we ask that he may take over right now. We pray for the viewers. We pray that the Holy Spirit may speak to their hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to begin in Deuteronomy chapter 30, and I'm going to read verse 19. Now verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, mm. that I have set before you life and, and death, death, blessing and cursing. Mm. Therefore, choose life, oh, yes. that both thou and thy seed may live. Mm. Now this is not the first time we're hearing, you know, something about two opposite sides and people having to make a choice, yep. mm -hmm. right? Yep. I mean, we can think of Joshua in the book, um, Joshua 24 verse 12. He says, mm. you know, choose this day who you will serve. We can think of Elijah on Mount Carmel, mm. you know, saying to the people, if Baal be Baal, then follow Baal. You know, if God be God, then follow God. Mm. I mean, even when we just start off in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, mm. Adam and Eve had to make a choice sure. about whether they were going to believe God mm. or Satan. So, this is nothing new, mm. right? And we know that as we go forward in the, in the future or in prophetic um, um, sequencing, we understand that we will once again be brought to a point where we need to choose who we serve, yeah. either God or we choose the opinions of man or the devil. Yes. Mm. So this chapter basically talks about... Uh, the impending conflict. Mm. Mm. So this conflict, uh, when we read about it, it says it's a forthcoming conflict. Mm. Sure. Mm. So when you read the book of Rev Revelation 12, 17, it will gi give us a clear picture what this conflict is. It says, Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring. Yes. Mm. Those who, care, who keep God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. Mm. Mm. So this conflict uh, is between truth and error. Mm. Mm. This conflict is between uh, the devil and the church. Mm. Mm. So the devil is trying by all means to change whatever that the commandments of the Lord is, is said to us. Sure. Mm -hmm. So this conflict is simply a, 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 an opposite of what the commandments of the Bible mm. say. Mm. So this conflict, we know that it is coming, but we know that it is already in progress. Okay. Mm. It has not yet a, 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 a fully a, a developed, but mm. the, 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 the works of it mm. are, are, are in progress. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, from, from the beginning of the great controversy which started in heaven, we find uh, Satan uh, having the a main goal and aim of, of deceiving men into believing uh, that uh, they have to transgress against, against God's law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Either by mm -hmm. casting it aside completely oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or disobeying a portion of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, in James chapter 2, verse 10, I'm going to read it. It says that for whoever shall keep the whole law hey. and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Oh, mm. Mm. There is a teaching that is going around uh, that um, the law of God, the Decalogue, has, was actually crucified on the cross. Mm. Mm. And then you, you, you want to think to say, okay, if it was crucified, the Decalogue, so, which means it's, it's now okay to take someone's wife. Yeah. Hey. Mm. The same person who believes that it was crucified on the cross, they'll definitely have a problem with their wife taken from them. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Mm. So, now the thing is, um, there are two types of 
of, 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 of laws. There's a ceremonial law, mm -hmm. there is a moral law. Yeah. So the devil has managed to cause that confusion so that the two types of laws are mixed up. Mm -hmm. Because the one type that was crucified on the cross is actually the ceremonial law. Why actually it wasn't crucified, it, 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 it ended fulfilled. when it was supposed to, it was fulfilled, mm -hmm. not really um, crucified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And why was it fulfilled? Because it was, it was a shadow, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was pointing. Mm -hmm to the real type. thing that was, mm. to the real type that was coming. Yeah. So when the type had come, the anti-type, the, 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 the anti -type, there was no need for it. Mm. Mm. So mm. Th that's the other type that we're talking about, the ceremonial law. Now the moral law, the decalogue, the yep. Ten Commandments, mm. they are permanent. Oh yes. That's why even when they were first given, on, at, at, at the first time, they were written on a tablet of stone yes. to signify permanency. Mm. Mm -hmm. Forever mm -hmm. there. And it, it must be kept holistically. Mm -hmm. That's why if you break one, you've broken them all. And the devil has managed to get people to make sure that they don't obey the fourth commandment. Mm -hmm. That's one point that has been attacked. Mm -hmm. The devil has made sure it's attacked. And the reason why he picked that one out of the ten, he concentrates on that mm -hmm. one, it's the only one that points to God as the creator mm -hmm. of the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. It's very nice to see also, mm -hmm. thank you so much, sister, yes. that people, people don't understand that our peculiarities, it's, it's intimately connected to obedience that we give to God. Mm -hmm. And you cannot obey God without following his commandment. It's impossible. I mm -hmm. just want to take you to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26, uh, verse 18 to 19, where God was speaking to the children of Israel, and you will see the commandments are going to be there. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it says, And the Lord hath avouched thee this day, to be a peculiar people, mm. as he hath promised thee, that thou shouldest keep all his commandments. I'm mm. trying to emphasize all his commandments. Mm. Verse, verse 19, and to make thee higher above all nations which he hath made, in praise and in, in name and in honor, and that thou mayest be a holy people unto the Lord thy God, as he hath spoken. Mm. So you can see the commandment of God, whenever they're actually being observed by the children of God, mm. they are going to be peculiar first. Mm. Not apart from being peculiar, they're going to be also above all nations mm. because they will never going to be the tail. They are going to be the head. Yeah. And the headship has to do with leadership. So God always wants to have, to have his children to lead others because there are people who need to be led. And many people, all of us, were being picked. Personally, I was picked anyway. I never knew what God is all about, and I didn't know how to live for God and how to please God while I live my life here on earth. But when he picked me from whatever he picked me, he was able to use people. And these people, the reason why they were able to win my confidence is simply because I saw in them a difference. Oh, yes. mm. And that difference was not because they, they actually created out of themselves, but simply because they've been connected to God. And through their allegiance to the law of God, mm. God has made them to be peculiar and they won my confidence. And there I am. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's important what Sister Kumbuya said about the law of God, you know, and in the Decalogue in particular, I mm. just want to zone in into the fourth commandment that she highlighted. That sure. It seems as if in the Decalogue, people don't necessarily have a problem with uh, stealing, killing. Yeah. You know, they take offense mm. from those things. Yeah. But then here we're looking at the last six, isn't it, mm. which is love for men because mm. let's remember the commandments of God are the fulfillment of uh, love are all about love sure. love mm. is the fulfillment yep. of the law because mm. without love you can't fulfill the law mm. <laughs> all right mm. so the last six it seems as if the people are saying then mm. uh -huh. it's fine to fulfill love to each other mm. all right we just yep. don't need to do it for God yep. mm. because the first four and then when you come to the mm. fourth okay. in particular yep. it is about uh, love for God yeah. okay so we can fulfill the law, okay, as far as men are concerned, but not where God is concerned. But mm. listen to what Exodus chapter 31 verse 13 says in particular concerning the Sabbath commandment. Mm. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath he shall keep, for it is a sign mm. between me and you yep. throughout your generations. 
that you may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Mm. It's a sign. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, we, 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 so that we may know that God sanctifies us. Yes. All right. So now we are missing out on these two important issues mm. if we go against this one particular commandment, yeah. which is the fourth. Even if we don't have a problem with the rest. But we will see in the chapter that they have a problem if, with, with, even with the second one in terms of idolatry yeah. in the Decalogue. Mm. Mm. I think just with relating to the issue of the Sabbath is that you find that the Sabbath commandment is the only commandment, as we have previously said, that identifies who this creator God oh, yeah. is, right? Mm. Yeah. And why this particular God mm. is, is um, um, I want to say, is, is deserving of worship, oh, yeah. sure. right? Mm. Um, and you see that just tied with the Sabbath, there are other you know, beliefs about the Bible that are actually also under attack. For example, creation, sure. you know, is under attack today. Mm, mm. You know, everybody is disputing the literal six days that God took. Okay. And, mm. and sometimes you don't even understand it because if God is so great and, and, and God has all the power, mm. why would God need a thousand years to create yeah. anything, yeah. you know? Mm. And so, but it, it's a big debate, you know, mm. we've got evolution, which is teaching mm. something mm. completely different, yeah. you know, that is giving us different ideas about how the world was created and mm. you know we've got the big bang theory there's a lot of things that actually link to the issue of creation sure. um that now bring us to a point where the sabbath is being attacked from every single angle yep. you know mm -hmm. not just the day but it's who is this god it's this god who's a creator is he really the creator mm. because some people are saying not sure. mm. so we find that the fourth commandment is really quite all encompassing and it shouldn't be surprising why the devil would want to attack it. Mm. Mm. Yes, because when you see in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, which you've just quoted, uh, it, the, it tells us that for in six days, the Sabbath commandment is one commandment among the ten that is elaborated. Mm. It says, for in six days, yeah. it does not just say keep the Sabbath, remember mm. to keep the Sabbath holy, because sure. it's a reminder of... Genesis, mm. okay, for, for people who are coming from slavery, really. Yep. That's why the word remember is important. Mm. Mm. But it says, for in six days, God created the heavens and the earth sure. and all those things. So it points us to who the creator is. Mm. Mm. So you attack the Sabbath commandment. We are taking the creator, you are erasing mm. who the creator is. Sure. And then mm. Big Bang theories and evolutionary theories can come in, creep in and... Uh, because those are pure speculative mm. theories, by the way. Mm. Mm. It's pure mm. man's speculation, and all of us have enough faith to take them as truth. Because mm. those theories don't even have enough empirical backing mm. to, 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 to qualify them as yep. theories. Yep. That can mm. be taught to our children in yeah. universities, okay? Mm. But they are taught. Sure. And faith, okay, is the actual thing that goes on there in terms of accepting them. They have no empirical backing. The Sabbath <laughs> commandment has empirical backing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's very nice to see that this, this movement, I mean, you're touching about the atheists, the evo, you know, evolutionists and so on and so forth. But it's, it just come also in the circle, in the circles of Christians, mm. where pastors stand up in their pulpits and encouraging their members not to consider the Sabbath. And as you've said, there's no evidence. There's no biblical support to say that why we shouldn't keep the Sabbath yes. itself. Mm. Because if really the Bible, what it says in the book of James chapter 2, verse 10, that if you break one and you are guilt of, them, of, of, of the rest of them all, what do you suppose if the devil want to win your confidence back to himself? Mm. What will he do? Mm. He knows that he cannot lead you to, to break all of them. Mm. The fact that you're breaking one, yeah. you've, you've got a problem already. Mm. So what it does, I remember when I was actually doing my primary school, my yeah. teacher taught me, when you want to write number 10, just take numerically, mm -hmm. you just take one and zero. zero. So now you come and come and rub off actually one. How much do you are now left with? Zero. Mm. So Christians don't say this. When you rub off one, you are left with nothing. Oh, that's mm. Mm. And that's how the devil is taking advantage mm. of that. Whereby Sabbath is no longer being considered in the Christian world. Why? Because they want to keep Sunday in place of the Sabbath of God while they have no any evidence from the Bible, uh, from the Bible that I give them that uh, power to be able to do that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, more of our, our Christian faith pillars, doctrines have been attacked. Yes. Not only creation only. We also have atonement. Yes. Mm. Um, the doctrine of atonement is under attack. Sure. Some people don't even believe that Jesus was God. Mm. They tell you are just a good man, you are just one of those prophets. Mm. They even question the, 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 the issue of incarnation itself. Yeah. Mm. If he was God, how come he came and he was born in the form of a human being? Mm. So a lot of our Christian uh, pillars are yeah. actually under attack. Sure. Mm. That's true, and we should always remember that 
you know, when we attack the Bible, we are in essence attacking the author of the Bible. Oh, yes. Yes. You know, when we're attacking the mm. law, mm. we are in essence just not wanting to acknowledge the lawgiver. Mm. So ultimately, all of these things lead us back to discrediting God or distrusting God. Sure. And ultimately, that's what Satan wants to do. He wants to attack the very foundation, which is God. Mm -hmm. And as we take a break, we want you viewers to think about what we are talking about and how important it is to actually believe in God's word and not just parts of it, but every single word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Stay tuned. Welcome back from the break. Thank you for staying tuned. Mm. We continue with our conversation. And I want us to go to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, we're going to start from verse 8. It says, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, mm. and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Mm. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Mm. So the Bible is warning us about getting close to God with our words and our actions, but our hearts are not really where they should be. Mm. And unfortunately, it is also accompanied by doctrines that are being taught that are not from the word of God and are being taught as the commandments of men. And people are actually following these things. Mm. And this is what we're talking about, that we've been talking about the, mm -hmm. the false Sabbath, if I may say, that the whole or most of the world is following. But the mm. true Sabbath in its light is not yet shining because yep. Satan is attacking the law of God and in particular the Sabbath. Mm. In fact, we are about to enter into um, a battle, a spiritual battle where the, the, the precepts of God are being substituted for the, for the laws of men. Mm. Yeah. Mm. The, the religion of the Bible is being substituted for the fable and the tradition mm. of mm. men. And one of the things that we are going to look at is spiritualism. Yeah. Mm. You know, it actually originated in the book of Genesis chapter yeah. 3 when, yeah. um, when the, the serpent says to Eve, mm. you shall not surely, surely die. die. Mm. Mm. So he has always, the devil has always been trying to prove that point and getting men to believe that men does not surely die, mm. Mm. the immortality of the soul. So in other words, he wants people to believe that man has natural immortality. Mm. Outside God, he yeah. has mm. natural immortality. Yeah. That's why you find that even people at uh, funerals, many times I've been touched because you find mm. people talking to their relatives in the coffin, mm. <laughs> blessing them, talking to them, yeah. uh, because something at the back of their mind is telling them this person is not surely dead. Mm. 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 Yeah, it. you know, the devil is always uh, uh, going to confuse us. And if we don't read the Bible, we will fall for anything. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, and one of the most uh, uh, famous verses, um, if you, 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 you do Bible study with people who who, who are rejecting the Sabbath, they will mm. always quote Matthew uh, 22, verse 34, the mm. great commandment. Mm. Okay. They always say that we no longer need to keep the Ten Commandments. Yeah. As long as you keep these two, then you are fine. Mm. And what they are not understanding is that Christ here was actually summarizing the law. Yeah. Because he says, uh, they say, teacher, which is the great commandment? Uh, greatest commandment in the law. And mm -hmm. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Mm -hmm. This is the first mm -hmm. greatest commandment. Yeah. And the second is, is like it, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, if you look at the, the Ten Commandments, it's, it's love, the first four, like you said, love from men God. to God, mm -hmm. and the last six, love from men to men, yep. who are loving one another. Mm -hmm. So here Christ was not simply saying that you no longer need to keep the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Just uh, uh, love your Lord, your God, and also love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. And I always ask him this question, does this mean then you are, you are now allowed to kill? Mm -hmm. Does this mean now you are, are now allowed to steal? Mm -hmm. Does this mean now you are allowed to have idols? Because yep. here Christ was simply summarizing the ten. He was not coming with something new. 
knew. That is yeah. why you always mm. said, that, and I did not come to, to, to abolish the mm. law, but I came to fulfill it. Mm. So that's why if you read here, it says, all the law and the prophets hang on these two sure. commandments. Yeah. Yeah. So the devil will always try to twist and say, okay, yeah, that's why you find people say the Bible contradicts itself mm. because they don't understand and they don't read the background. Mm. They, it, God cannot say, love me with yeah. all your heart yeah. and yet do not keep my Sabbath. Mm. Hey. How can you love me with all your heart yet you, you, you worship idols? Mm. If you love How me. can you love your neighbor as you love yourself yet you are stealing? Yeah. Mm. So yeah. this is not something new but a continuation, uh, just a summary of the Ten Commandments. Mm. 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 I, I, I just want to expand as well on what you read earlier on and what my sister spoke about spiritualism creeping in. Mm. Look, mm. from Matthew chapter 7, I mean chapter 15, it says, in vain do they worship me. So, and as you go on, it says, teaching but the commandments of men. And these are tradition of men. Mm. So God says, whatever that you're doing under the so-called, you know, religious practices, as long as it's not attached to my commandments, but it's men's commandments, then what, whatever that you do, if you know about it, of course, is not. Mm. If you are doing mm. it ignorantly, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. In the times of ignorance, God so winks it. Mm. Okay, but, but he calls every man to repent. Yeah. But if you are doing it consciously, knowing very well that you are trampling upon the commandment of God to try and exalt the one, I mean, commandments of men, then it becomes a problem because all your worship comes to nothingness. Yeah, mm. Now, one of the biggest mm. tradition that we know of, it's Sunday observance. I cannot, you know, overemphasize that. Mm. I want to quote from one of the uh, documents which was published by Pope Francis. Yes. Concerning the Sunday observance, it's coming and it's going to be enforced in the near future. He says from La Laudato Si, page uh, 237, he says this, on Sunday, our, our participation in the Eucharist has special importance. Mm. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be mm. a day mm. which heals our relationships with God, uh, with our, ourselves, and with others, and mm. with the world. Mm. Mm. That's, a, that's a black and white lie, mm. and it's a tr tradition of men. Mm. Why? Because Sunday has no any foundation to heal our relationships, because God says, come and rest on Sabbath. Yeah. That's where we connect with God, yeah. we connect with others, yeah. and the world will see that we belong to God. So it's very key that we should understand that spiritualism comes in as soon as people depart yeah. mm. from obse observance of the commandment of God. And we read in the previous lesson that we did where we said, if you're still cherishing sin, you are actually a vi you are going to be a victim of spiritualism when it's going to be set up on, on board. I think the, yeah. the question then would be, what is the spiritualism we're talking about? I just want us to revisit that. I mean, we know that, you know, it, it emanates from you shall not surely die. You sure. know? So the fact that the soul lives eternally, mm -hmm. you know, the fact that people don't die, they go into another state of existence. But, you know, there are other things that show us this, this aspect of spiritualism and how Satan is using it now, mm. but how it will even get worse in the future. In fact, one of the methods that um, the devil uses in, in, in this uh, spiritualism, we are told that he uses elements also to, to, to garner for unprepared souls. Mm. He has studied the secrets of the laboratories of nature, mm -hmm. and he manipulates the elements, mm. the weather, the climate, mm. to suit himself mm. and to accomplish what he wants to do. Let's, let's look at Job. Mm. You know, heaven allowed Satan to tamper with Job using natural elements. Mm. And we find that right now he is actually doing that. Mm. Mm. We're told that he's actually, let me actually read this from, from the book that we are studying. He has studied the secrets of the laboratories of nature mm. and he uses all his power to control the elements as far as God allows. When he was suffered to afflict Job, how quickly flocks and herds, servants, houses, children were swept away. Yay. One trap was succeeding another in a moment. Mm. And uh, let me go on to, to read this one. Even now he is at work. Mm. Sure. In mm. accidents, he is there in great conflagrations. He is there in fierce tornadoes and terrific hailstorms. He is there. We're told that he has, he has breathed, he breathes poisonous uh, substances into the air to cause pestilences. Mm. Right now, are we not going through a pestilence? Pestilences, they're everywhere. Yep. Mm. Because he's being allowed to manipulate the elements 
of nature, the weather, and everything else that God created. I just want to give a definition of it because you wanted to have... <laughs> mm. she, she wanted also that we should define, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, coming back here, dictionary says Good. spiritualism, and it says there a system of belief or religious practice Based, based on supposed communication with the spirits, mm. okay, of the dead, especially through mediums. And in the, this goes, it says philosophy, and it says the doctrine that the spirit exists as distinct from the matter or that spirit is the only reality. Mm. So we are talking about belief here. Mm. Whenever you speak about spiritualism, it's actually belief. And it can mm. manifest in so many things. Mm. Okay, mm. so when you come to Christianity, it's the state of the dead. Mm. Okay, where, when you die, you don't really die, you're still alive in some way. It's, it's spiritualism, mm. you know. So when, when, when one begins to embrace those teachings that have nothing to do, any bearing with the Bible, it's actually spiritualism on its own. Mm. And at the core of spiritualism, really, if we look at Eve, because Eve is the one who's engaging in the conversation with the serpent. Yeah. We must look at ourselves also, you know, to say, in what ways are we aspiring to a higher uh, level of Fear. existence, yeah. you know, mm. to such an extent that we are willing to break the commandment of the Lord. Sure. Mm. Eve knew the commandment of the Lord, mm. okay? But because of the promise that, ca that came with the deception mm. that mm. you will become like... God's sure. saying, you see, your, your current state of existence mm. is of a lower quality. You are going to attain to a higher quality mm. of existence. So I just wanted to bring it home to us to say, let's think more clearly because spirit, this is one of our impending crises, mm. as, as the chapter says. It's not only the Sabbath that we have to contend for as a pillar of our faith, mm. but also the idea that uh, the devil is deceiving us to think that there's a higher state of existence than this one that we currently have that we can attain to sure. if we break God's mm. law. Mm. You know, how many th uh, things do we sacrifice? How, how, how many of God's law do we sacrifice? Okay, yeah. for, 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 for gain, mm. for gain, for worldly mm. gain, yeah. that's the word mm. I'm, I'm looking for, mm. yeah. all right? Because we are not any different from Eve, sure. you know, mm. she's our grandparent, mm. you know, so we must also uh, bring it home to ourselves, mm. this issue of spiritualism, oh, yes. we are not mm. immune. Mm. In mm. fact, Mrs. Ellen Jewett, when she comments about that, she says that uh, what happened to Eve will happen to all those who are not willing mm. to take up their responsibilities according to the position that God has given hey, them. Hey. Mm. She says that um, Eve God mm. had had given her a certain position, yes. mm. but because she was not satisfied with that, mm. okay. she mm -hmm. aimed for something higher. Mm. But l look at what happened. It mm. became she even fell oh. even oh. Yeah. below yeah. Yeah. what oh, she had or where she had originally been placed. Mm. Mm. She fell below that. Sure. So she goes on to say, everyone who is thinking like Eve. Mm. the same result will come to them. Mm. They will fall below what God actually sure. originally, mm. the position that he assigned to them. Mm. Mm. In fact, uh, the oh. author, sorry to cut you, the oh. author actually emphasizes that point that whenever disregard of God's law yeah. is in place, mm. uh, the, 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 it's, 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 it's a decline, it's, mm. it's a serious declension of sure. moral declension yeah. in the people. Mm. Mm. That, uh, mm -hmm. Because when we do these things, we are aspiring for something better. She makes an example in this chapter of the judiciary system, mm. how corrupted it has become because it has what? It has disregarded mm. the law of God. Mm. So even though these are the two main uh, things, all of them are centered, uh, spiritualism and the Sabbath, mm. all of them are centered around the law of God. Sure. Mm. Mm. So the spiritualism uh, um, is very important and key in this chapter because when you read, I just want to read this quote, it says, when all these things happen, the calamities, and it even says the devil will even heal people. Yeah, mm. yeah. he will want to show Angel people that he, he makes things happen. Yeah. But it, 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 when all these calamities happen, it says it will be declared mm. that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath. Mm. That, that this sin has brought calamities which mm. will not cease until Sunday observance shall yeah. be strictly enforced. Yeah. And that those who present the claims of the fourth commandment. Because you are neglecting the Sunday Sabbath, mm. Mm. This, that is the result 
of all these things. These things are happening because you are rejecting this. So he will try mm. to convince people in order to be safe. That means you need to follow the Sunday Sabbath. Mm. Mm. So you mm. see that the devil is, has power. Remember, yep. this person when he was chased, away from heaven. Mm. God did not remove uh, anything from him. Mm. So he has this ability yeah. Yeah. to confuse us. Yeah. Mm. He can use anything, whether all those things sure. to show us. And they will use those things to say, mm. because we are rejecting this Sunday, mm. hence these things are yeah. happening. So therefore, when all those things happen, we should never shift just because things that are happening around us are not good. Mm. 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 We need to take an ad break. So as you've heard, this is a very serious conflict and each person needs to decide where they're going to stand. Are we going to stand with God, with his Sabbath, or are we going to stand with the devil, with Sunday observance? and spiritualism. The choice is yours to make and we hope that during the break you will kneel down and pray for your own soul even as we do the same. Please don't go anywhere. Welcome back from the break. I really do hope that you knelt down and you ask God to help you and to show you the way in which you should go. And what we're going to discuss now is exactly that, that when we've spoken a lot about, you know, the Sabbath and Sunday sacredness or the lack thereof, and we've spoken about spiritualism, the immortality of the soul and how dangerous these two doctrines are and how they're going to push us towards the end of time. Mm. We need to think about what are we supposed to do now? What kind of people are we supposed to be? How do we prepare ourselves? And to usher us into that conversation, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Mm. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what, what manner man? of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Mm. Mm. I think we need, we need uh, when I hear that, what men of, you know, <laughs> what, what men of person are we to be? Mm. It, it's calling us to be able to examine ourselves mm. first and because if the Lord is coming mm. and there's a specification in terms of the quality of the people that are going to go with the Lord, Okay, so the Bible says when he comes, he's coming to gather those. I mean, Psalms chapter 50, verse 3, going down. He's going to come and gather those who actually have made a covenant with him. Hmm. So, and with entering the covenant with God is the work of preparation that I, is, you know, he has to go along with. Hmm. So, if we are to stand when the Lord comes back, we'll have to prepare. That's what I would like to say. Preparation must take place. And hmm. how do you prepare? It all comes back to the Bible. Mm. Because the Bible, that's what shows you what God likes and what God dislikes. Mm. Then from there on, you can now begin to compare your lifestyle with what the Bible is going to expose to you, to your consciousness, so that you can look for power out of you, you know, outside of you, which is Christ, to be able mm. to align your life with him. That's, that's what I can actually share with the viewers. Mm. Yes, that's so true, my brother. We really need to take serious introspection right now and, and self-examination to see what manner of people ought you to be. Mm. It says you must be uh, projected to the future and imagine what kind of a person would you like to be. And I am taken to Psalms 119 sure. because right now the, the, our biggest trouble is sin. Right. Mm. So if there's any preparatory work that we need to be engaged mm. in mm. is the work of listening to the Holy Spirit, which is the former rain, mm. in its work of getting rid of sin in our lives, sure. so that we may be fit recipients for the refreshing uh, showers, mm. which is the latter rain. Otherwise, we won't be qualified for the latter rain if we don't use this one. It, I want to read from verse 9. It says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed thereunto according to thy word. Mm. With my whole heart have I sought thee, or let me not wander from thy commandments. Mm. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Mm. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies mm. as much as 
in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy laws. I will delight myself in the statutes. I will not forget thy word. I was reading from verse 9 to verse 16. Hmm. Psalms 119. So David is a perfect example here, you know, to, in terms of knowing what is it exactly that can cleanse because that's the question he's asking. Oh, yes. What? Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, shall a young man, uh, uh, wh with what shall a young man cleanse his ways? Okay? You can put old woman, whatever. It's just a person, okay? Yeah. It's just mm -hmm. referring to a person. Yeah. Yeah. There's only one way of cleansing our ways so that we become prepared people mm -hmm. and become the manner of people that will be qualified to participate in the first resurrection if we sleep yeah. or be taken up into the clouds to meet our Savior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. In fact, for, for one to be able to prepare, to, to, to know how to prepare, we need to know what we're preparing for. Yes. Mm. One of the ways that the devil uses is to, you know, God does not force himself on anyone. Yeah. But the enemy does. Oh, yes. Mm. One of the things that he does is to force through cruelty. He uses compulsion. Yeah. To induce fear. Yeah. You know. Mm. So in order for us to prepare for this, mm. um, let me read from... Re Revelation chapter 2, verse, verse 10. Mm. Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, mm. that ye may be tried. Mm. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Mm. Be thou faithful unto, unto death, death, and thou give thee a crown, a crown of, of life. life. Amen. 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 So as we prepare, let's mm. prepare that even if we find ourselves in prison, Mm. We'll be able to stand. Mm. Mm. Let's make sure that nothing moves us. We sure. will not waver mm. from the word of God. Mm. Mm. Amen. Mm. Amen. I like a quote there. It says, Those who honor the Bible Sabbath will be denounced as enemies of law and order. Mm. Yeah. As breaking down the moral restraints of society, causing anarchy and corruption, and calling down the judgments of God upon the earth. Mm. Mm. So this simply shows us that um, keeping uh, the law of God or standing for God will always make you the enemy of the world. Mm. Mm. So we need to stand, like my sister has said, we need to stand even when things are not going right. Yes. Because mm. the Bible tells us that blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against Yay. you mm. because of me. Yeah. And I like verse 12, says, Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. Mm -hmm. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Mm -hmm. So, Bazalwane, we need to know that these things will happen when we choose God. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. But there is a reward for us in heaven. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't mean anything to gain the reward of earth mm. Mm. and yet we miss his kingdom sure. and we know his kingdom is internal this is just a temporary situation so we just need to make sure that we pray and we study the bible so that we will be able to stand mm. because without prayer we won't be able to stand mm. when the going gets tough we will move mm. That's true. so Prayer is the only thing that will keep us Our standing. Mm. 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 I think there's also a place, just before you come, Brother Francois, yeah. is, is to say that, you know, God has revealed these things because of love. Mm. Mm. You know, God could have withheld this information from mm. us. Exactly. But God in His mercy, in His grace, He tells us these things so that when they happen, we are not we surprised. Are, yes, we are yes, not yes. taken by surprise. Mm. You know, as... as you know, the verse was saying that Christ comes as a thief in the night. Mm. Christ is not intending to come as a thief yep. to those that know him. Yes. Yeah. So he gives this information in advance to say, this is the time for you to know this information. Mm. And like you quoted the book of Acts, that says, in the times of ignorance, God winks. Yep. You know, it's mm. okay. We've, we've been walking in the wrong way. You know, sure. some of us used to worship on Sunday. I come from a, a background where I was worshiping on Sunday. Mm. But when the truth comes, God expects us to investigate the truth mm, yeah. and when we find out that it is the truth we then turn our ways and we and we do that which is right oh, you know yes. a lot of people grew up in homes where they would visit traditional healers yeah. um and and not in the in the traditional healer sense of the word but isangoma people who are using witchcraft you mm. know and are doing evil things and people grew up in homes like that and now we are saying to those people that might have grown up like that our viewers to say that mm. God does not hold you accountable for those things in the mm. past mm. because he understands that that is the past you did not know. But now when light has come, 
God is saying that you must take the light and run with it, mm. right? So, so it's that spirit of being willing to understand that God has revealed truth because the truth is saving in and of itself. Oh, yes. The truth might hurt, mm. you know, we're, we're not saying it won't hurt. <laughs> the truth might make you want to run away sometimes yep. yeah. because it's not comfortable. Mm. But God is giving us the truth now when yep. we still have a chance to repent. Mm. Brother Francois, you were coming in. I, I wanted just to look at the quality of the church that our God is going to come because the context in which, you, I mean, the verses that we're reading for us in the beginning, it talks about the coming of Christ, isn't mm, it? Mm. So I just want to show the viewers that there's a quality of, of life that our God actually want to see in us. You know, anyone who want to make it for eternity. Mm. So Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to 27, oh, yes. the Bible says, Husbands, love your wives, mm. even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by, by the word. Mm. that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Oh, yes. mm. Mm. And, and when, when you study the, I, I want to be practical on this. Mm. Yeah. You, please, there's please. no anyone who can make themselves, who can come to this condition by themselves. Oh, yeah. no. mm. It is impossible. Yeah. It's all begin by connecting to Christ. That's yeah. why it says Christ's object lesson, page 311. It says by his perfect obedience, mm. when we submit ourselves to him, our will is actually merged in his own will. Yes. Then we are going to live his life because what is being spoken here is the life of Jesus Christ being reproduced mm. into the church. Mm. So if we are to reach that quality of life that God wants us to have and be able to prepare ourselves to be ready among those who are going to be make it, we'll have to begin by connecting ourselves with Christ and mm. through the power of Christ, we'll be able to, uh, he will be able to reproduce himself in us mm. and we'll be ready for his second coming. Mm. Mm. And this links with just next door. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, which says, For it is God that worketh in you, yes. both to will and yes. to do. Yes. You know, so, it, yeah, God doesn't, of his good pleasure, do God things. doesn't start with just the will, but mm. also the doing, the doing. you know, mm. that God is involved in both processes, to will and to do of his good pleasure. So, indeed, Brother Francis, we are not alone in this. We, Elijah is one, ex, one such example oh, yes. of a person who was connected to divine power, sure. which mm. is God. Yeah. And in this book, in this chapter in particular that we are discussing right now, mm. he was called the troubler. You know, <laughs> of, 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 of the Israel. people. Mm. And you alluded to something like that, that uh, there will be calamities that will be happening mm. simply because there will be this group which is not keeping the commandments of men, mm -hmm. okay, that uh, Zuki started with, but are keeping the commandments of God, they will then be the ones to blame mm. for mm. the calamities yes. that will be happening. In the mm -hmm. same way that Elijah was blamed, sure. because what did he do? He kept the commandments of God. I just want to read it, verse 17 and 18 only, mm. of First Kings chapter 18. Ne? It says, And it came to pass uh, when Ahab saw Elijah, mm. That Ahab said unto him, Art thou, that, that, art, art thou he that troubleth Israel? Mm. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, mm. but thou in thy father's house, yeah. in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balim. Mm. Mm. So he defended himself and said, In fact, these calamities that you see happening yeah. mm. are not my fault. Mm. It is your fault. Mm. You yeah. are the ones that are troubling. Mm. the house, not me. Yeah. So there's trouble. What we get here really, because I just want to center us back into the commandments, is that the commandments of God, yeah. really, when we depart from them, trouble mm. and all manner of things follow. And, and of course the devil will try to twist it, but we must be as clear as Elijah was yeah. that I am not troubling the house. Mm. You are. Amen. Amen. When, when you come back, uh, I just want to do this one. You know, Christ always will find a way on how to speak to us as individuals. You know, here, here, Second Timothy chapter two, verse nineteen. Maybe perhaps there might be someone who might be thinking that they can continue to live as they please, whatever they are, and God is going to take them in anyway. Hmm. All right, after they've been exposed to the light of the gospel and they try to, you know, just because they are those individuals. Yeah. I remember my conversion was a very interesting one. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I mean, the state of the dead, I actually fought against it mm. at the beginning of it. 
Mm. Because when I was watching the video speaking about this, I put it off and I went off. I didn't want to touch it anymore. I mean, that was a stubborn spirit, but God mm. brought me back. Mm. But listen to the second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. It says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Amen. Mm. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them Amen. that are what? Are his. Mm. And let everyone, not That's some, let, yeah. mm. let everyone that nameth yes. The name of Christ, depart, depart from, from iniquity. Oh, yeah. mm. So if you are a Christian and you are actually calling yourself a Christian and yet you are breaking one of the list of mm. these commandments, mm. God is calling you, if you are going to continue to be considered as he is, you just depart have to depart from, from iniquity. iniquity. Oh, and yes. you cannot depart from iniquity by going on against that commandment mm. because observance of the commandment of God or obedience to the commandment of God, it's also a sign that shows we are walking with him mm. because we have agreed in that covenant relationship that we've entered with him. Mm. Mm. Amen and amen. Mm. On that note, we're going to do our closing remarks. Let's start with Brother Nancy. Mm. I'm going to close with this uh, quote. It says, God's holy word, which has been handed down to us at such a cost of suffering and, and blood, mm. is but little valued. The Bible is within the reach of all, but there are few who really accept it as a guide of life. Mm. But Zalone, this Bible that we sometimes take for granted, sure. in the previous chapters, if you can remember very well, we were reading about how people died for this Bible. Mm. Mm. So the time that is coming requires people who will be ready. And we have said this before, that we will be ready if we read the Bible. Mm. Mm. So it will be very, very sad, I can imagine, to them uh, to know that something that we died for mm. was never appreciated for mm. the next coming generation. Mm. Mm. So, Bazalani, we need to take this serious. We need to read and so that we'll be able to, to, to when that time comes, it will find us ready. Sure. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Uh, Jude, uh, it's just one chapter. I'm going to read verse 3. Mm. Mm? It says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly mm. contend for the faith which mm. was once delivered unto the saints. Mm. Mm. So there is something, we are in a battle, it's a conflict that is coming. Ne? Mm. So this verse is just to encourage us and to give us heart so that we don't despair and think, oh no, this thing is big that is coming, this impending conflict. No, let's go into it with courage and content for the faith. Mm. Mm. Amen, amen. Mm. Um, we were talking about preparing what, ought, mm. ma what manner of people are we ought to be. Mm. I am going to read uh, a quotation that says, the greatest want of the world is the want of man. Yeah. Mm. Men will not be bought or sold. Oh, yeah. mm. Men who in their innermost souls are true and honest. Mm. Men who do not fear to call sin by its right, by its right name. Oh, yeah. mm. Men whose conscience is true to duty as the nickel is to the pole. Mm. Mm. And men who will stand for the right though they have been for. for. Mm. Mm. So mm. as part of preparation for this battle, this impending conflict, mm -hmm. Our characters need to sound something like this. Mm. Mm. In fact, she goes on to say, but such a character is not the result of accident. Mm. She says it is not due to special favors yeah. or endowments of providence. Mm. Mm. A noble character is a result of self-discipline, hey. of the subjection of the lower to the higher oh, nature, oh. Mm. the surrender of self for the service of love to God and the man. Sure. So as we prepare for this impending conflict, let's work on our characters. Oh, yes. mm. The work of character building mm. is very important oh, Lord. Mm. because the battle is a spiritual battle, remember. Mm. It's not physical. Mm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh -huh. First Corinthians chapter, chapter 10, verse 21, the Bible says, uh, ye, ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of the devils. Yeah. So we, God is saying that make your position clear. Yes. Mm. Yes. Don't, don't try to mingle the two. It's yeah. either you are God's or you are the devil's mm. because mm. that's where God wants us to know. Don't try to mix the two. Mm. Mm. Amen. Amen. And on that note, Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Mm. If anyone will hear my voice, and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and, and him he with me. With me. Mm. Mm. So ultimately, Christ is knocking on your door as he is 
sure. has knocked also on yeah. all of our doors. Yeah. With some he's inside, but with some he's on the outside mm. and knocking. Yeah. And he says, why don't you open the door today and let him come in? Mm. And everything we presented today is Christ knocking on your door and saying he wants to come in. On that note, we will close with a word of prayer and our sister Nsigi will pray for us. Our Father who art in heaven, we thank you, dear Lord, for this chapter and we thank you for the truth and the light that you have shown, Father God, so that even if we were groping in darkness, there may be light in the path that we trod. We thank you, Lord, for your mercies that are continuously seeking after us like your lost ship and bringing us back to the fold. Oh, dear Lord, bless your viewers, your children who are listening to this message at home and grant them a, a teachable spirit and an impressible spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.